Well, welcome to this uh, latest episode of a series of uh, discussions I'm having with a number of individuals and groups to uh, discuss the impact that uh, COVID-19 is having uh, on their lives. And today we're going to be looking at it from a young person's perspective. And joining me is Tallulah Thomas, who is a member of the Welsh Youth Parliament, uh, representing Cloyd South, at the Chrysor. Well, welcome, Tallulah. Thank you very much. So yeah. tell me, first of all, then, give me an idea of how life has changed for a young person such as yourself since, when was it, mid-March, when the country went into lockdown? Yeah, well, it's definitely changed drastically. Um, not for the better, I, 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 it's arguable, but um, yeah, definitely with the schools closing and the uncertainty around, I guess, all of our futures and the opportunities we're going to get. Um, I'm not, I don't feel this kind of, this trust in the government right now. Um, and it's definitely led me to feeling a little bit apathetic. Um, and, you know, I feel a lot of pressure personally, and a lot, um, a lot of my friends have said, we feel this, this pressure to be really productive during this time. And this feeling of, oh my gosh, you know, the world is on pause, but I've got, to, I've got to continue because we've kind of been drilled to, to behave like that because of school and exams and stuff. You know, I would have had my, ex you know, well, this would have been exam season. Um, so it's very odd to just be stuck at home. But um, I think one thing that I, you know, I like to think about and I try to remind myself is that, you know, there's, there's no pressure and um, it's okay to just kind of, exist um on a plane of divine and just kind of just take it all in because it's it's so overwhelming and so it can be really really detrimental to your mental health and just overall well-being it's something we've never experienced mm. as a society as no. in our lifetimes uh, absolutely um, not only young people but, but everyone really you're right it feels exactly like you press the pause button and uh, you're in animated suspension it does and it feels like we're kind of going I was talking about this with a friend. It feels like we're going towards some sort of weird new chapter in our lives. And it's very odd and it feels kind of stagnant. But um, I'm, I'm trying to look at it pos positively and see all the change that can come in this new chapter, hopefully. Well, if we can follow the script for the new chapter, of course, your intention is, is to go to university later on this year. What are you hearing yeah. from there? Are they telling you that it's business as usual or are they... Are they themselves saying that they're putting things on hold? Yes, yeah, so it was a bit annoying. I had to find out kind of what was going on through all these articles online um, to do with the uni, which wasn't really ideal because it made me very stressed and anxious because it was basically saying that all the lectures were going to be online and everything was going to be digital and online. Um, and that made me think, oh my gosh, am I going to be able to go? You know, I'm itching to, to go off to university. I'm very much ready. Um, but finally they did get in touch with us directly. And, you know, I think it was just a, it was just a matter of them covering their backs and just, yeah, um, being, I guess, honest on what could happen. Um, so I'm not too stressed about it now because whatever happens happens and I have a lot more time I haven't even started yet um but they yeah it's it's a bit controversial but they have I guess that it's all online but I'm I'm hoping that as I guess government guidelines change and adapt um they have said that they're going to adapt to that so I think you know they're going to try and make it as normal as possible and um you know, it's kind of it's kind of exciting. Maybe if you want to be super positive, it's like a, a completely new uni experience. Who knows what kind of alternative activities are happen, alternative whatever. Um, it, it, you know, I guess we just have to take it in our stride as students. Uh, and I suppose yeah. it's still wait and see, really, isn't it, to see where we are when we get to to the autumn. But of course, one thing we do know is that the government has announced that schools will be reopening in Wales, at least in some form. Uh, at the end of this month. I mean, what are your friends telling you about the prospect of, of actually going back to school? Yeah, a lot of young people are saying, what is the point? Um, there's not a lot of term time even left. Um, and a lot of people have said that, you know, doing things online is actually more beneficial and they're actually more receptive. They don't have as 
much distractions. I know that's not the case for everyone, but that's just one opinion. Um, but yeah, I think it's, personally, I think it's way too soon. And I think, I mean, it's just, it's putting a lot of pressure on, on students, on teachers, especially, on all the extra, uh, you know, funding for cleaners and the deep cleaning. And, you know, a lot of parents are ringing. My friend worked at a school and they're all ringing, asking what is happening. And because a lot of, you know, the government guidelines haven't actually been released to a lot of schools, they can't be upfront and they can't actually tell them, okay, this is exactly what's happening. So it's just a lot of uncertainty and a lot of pressure for, for teachers and students alike. So I just think it's way too soon, personally. Mm. And of course, the longer term prospects as well in terms of jobs and the economy, there's a, there's a recession looming, which uh, clearly will have an effect particularly on, on young people maybe starting off on their careers. And I know Llangollen is, is heavily dependent uh, on tourism as well, which is one of the most effective, uh, affected, I should say, uh, sectors in the economy. What are young people telling you about you know, how they feel about job prospects and, and maybe more immediate impacts in terms of seasonal work over the summer? Yeah, it's so weird seeing the streets so empty. You know, it would be a Stedvod week coming up. Mm. It would, it's usually absolutely crazy in Tlangoshen. Um, and myself, I have a, you know, weekend job in a restaurant. I was kind of relying on getting in those shifts to, be, to feel comfortable at uni financially. Um, but obviously that can't happen. So I, I do think it's, it's, it's going to hit us hard. But I'm just hoping that you know, our community is very strong here and I'm hoping that everybody can kind of unite and just support the local small businesses. And I know that there are a lot of people here who like to do that. Um, so I'm just, yeah, I can't really predict the future, you know, what's going to happen with the economy. Um, but we have to be real. It's not good. It's not looking good. But. Yeah. And I'd endorse your comments about supporting local businesses as well, because clearly we need to make sure that money remains within the local economy uh, as opposed to, to leaking out through maybe some of the big uh, supermarkets and others but there we are that's that's for another day maybe um I, the other thing as well of course you, you touched earlier on on mental health and the impacts you know that uh, young people maybe are going to feel in terms of, of of mental health and as a member of the youth parliament here in wales of course you've done quite a bit of work haven't you as a parliament on uh, mental health issues for young people tell us a little bit about that work yeah well it's funny because we literally today just had a meeting on kind of what we want to see um, and so earlier this year we launched a survey for young people to let us know how they're feeling tell us what and in, in their honest words in their authentic words what they think of the mental health system and mental health education in schools especially because I know that that was discussed um, to perhaps be in the new curriculum I'm not sure if it did make it but I'm hoping um, so because I just think you know it was it was pointless having just a small group of people um, discuss mental health when it's such a broad field and we need we need young people who have experience with the mental health system telling us what they think and then we can somehow make a report and tell, I guess you guys, we can tell, you know, uh, the government and um, all the committees who work for young people. So that's something we've been looking into making, you know, curating a, a report um, and to publish this. So we've also been talking a lot about making, kind of digitalizing our campaigns because we're going to have a many events but obviously they can't happen so we're digitalizing and we want to make a lot of workshops for young people with panelists discussing uh i guess mental health and especially during this time you know trying to combat everything that's going on but making it in a really not fun but yeah kind of like fun way you know incorporating creativity in it meditation well-being I think that's a really, you know, integral part to maintaining your well-being um, and it shouldn't be dismissed for just being hippy-dippy. It's not, it's so, so helpful when you actually look into these things and it's, it's been proven to be extremely helpful, helpful for young people. Absolutely, absolutely. And of course, your, 
nearing the end of your term as a member of, of the Youth Parliament. So uh, mm-hmm. tell us a bit about, you know, how valuable experience it's been and maybe whether it's been quite a uh, frustrating one as well, maybe. Yeah, um, on the whole, it's been incredible. I've met so many different people from different backgrounds that I never would have encountered before this. Um, you know, I got to go to India for the Commonwealth Youth Parliament conference. I met so many people from around the world. And, you know, in terms of personal gain, it's definitely been incredible because I've adopted this new found confidence just within myself and this ability to just kind of talk to anyone, which is so beneficial, <laughs> beneficial, beneficial as a young person. So I would definitely urge anyone who's interested in politics, but I don't even want to call it politics. It's just real life <laughs> and things you care about. I hate that that's the umbrella term, but um, it's, if you care about things, definitely go for it. Um, the only one, you know, judgment I would make that, I don't know if this was a lack of, I guess, time to do it because it's only a, a two year term. Um, you know, there was definitely more focus on one committee, which is the life skills in the, in the curriculum. But I totally understand that because it was a very current topic. You know, they needed feedback um, last year. So it was heavy. Yeah, it was very much prioritizing that um, and not necessarily the others. But um, I'm hoping we're making up for it now that we have time. You know, I mean, even though it's over video cam or whatever um we are making steps and um we're still doing things so that's great yeah absolutely and of course there'll be another opportunity as well for people who do care about things uh to cast their vote uh in the assembly election in may next year of course because 16 and 17 year olds will be able to vote uh, for the first time um, are you hearing from your friends uh, an increased interest in sort of these issues and, and being sort of engaged politically because Clearly, in terms of devolution, I think it's fair to say mm-hmm. that there's greater awareness now following this uh, outbreak of, of COVID-19 that actually we have a Welsh government, that there are discrete Welsh ministers for health, education, uh, the economy, etc., compared to the UK ministers I- in London. Is that something you think that's actually cutting through in terms of young people and politics? I think definitely only this period of time it's actually become more visible. Um, but it's also been, become visible people's lack of understanding of devolution um, and actually what gets decided in Wales and what doesn't get decided in Westminster. Um, so I think it's definitely outlined this lack of education that we see in schools on devolution. I never had a lesson on it. Um, it, it really is kind of up to you as a young person to do your research, um, which is a shame, I guess, but also very beneficial. Um, so I think. I have seen a surge in, you know, I think as people see real things happening in their, in their local communities and they see not necessarily bad things, but just anything that, you know, actually affects them directly, that always kind of sparks something in a young person, I think. And it's a shame that it takes, you know, personal experience for you to engage with politics and with what's going on in the world. But I feel like definitely with this period, you know, they've realised, wow, okay a lot is going on i need to i need to understand it um so i am hoping that you know there is a surge of engagement uh, with young people in politics but i think i'm kind of undermining my own ed- generation there because i do think we are very engaged in politics you've seen all the protests that are going on right now i think people do care and i think we are undermined as a generation that is just glued to their phones which is so untrue we are very feisty and we care about these issues so i think that's definitely you know been highlighted during this time yeah and of course that's reflected as well in increased support for for independence the polls are telling us of course that uh, numbers of supporters are increasing and and consistently younger people are, are more uh, likely to support independence as well is that what is that what you're finding amongst your uh, friends and, and contemporaries definitely um you know, it's amazing. It's very, it's almost becoming like super trendy to be a guest company supporter, which I love. Um, but I do feel sometimes that, you know, I'm kind of biased because all of my friends are very, not very Welsh on the fact they, you know, are in the Welsh community. They love all things kind of Welsh culture and stuff. And I feel like sometimes I, you know, I log into Twitter and I see all these people being like, yes, I've just become a Yes Cymru member. 
Twitter and I'm so happy. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is actually happening. But is that because I don't follow all of the people that do live in this country that don't support it? Probably. Um, but I think, you know, there's a lot of work to do, um, especially with the independence movement and like accessibility and inclusivity, diversity. There's a lot of issues there, but I think that, you know, it's definitely a step in the direction and I'm very happy with the results of the polls. But yeah, I do feel sometimes there is this kind of connotation that it's just Cymru Cymraeg, you know, just like super Welsh people, um, which I think is actually changing. I think a lot of people are, are very receptive to the movement and I'm very happy about that. Yeah, and certainly the, the figures are going in the right direction if, if the polls are to be believed. Um, so just to conclude then, uh, Tallulah, clearly we've covered a lot of ground uh, uh, today in, in this uh, discussion. What do you think would be the key messages that you'd want to take out uh, and, and convey to Welsh Government and the policy makers in terms of how young people maybe perceive their futures coming out of uh, this uh, very difficult period into what will hopefully be some sort of uh, new norm? Yeah, um, I think I think as a, as a collective would like to be taken more seriously. Um, you know our generation and i think that that's been shown definitely through the black lives matter protests that us as young people we care about these issues so as i said before that's one thing i'd like uh, the government to take out of it and also i would love to see the petition that has been put forward to the senate to be discussed and hopefully implemented in the curriculum which is black history bame people of color history so it's not whitewashed anymore because our curriculum there are a lot a lot of faults and instabilities with the curriculum here in wales um, and i'm hoping that that's one change we'll see from this period of time um something positive um and also i guess i would just like you know i would love the government to just not be all about economic benefits i understand that of course but i would love to them to really convey somehow a message that they do care about the young people and they care about our futures because ultimately we are going to be the ones with these repercussions um from this period of time we are going to be paying for all of this <laughs> that's gone on for the you know for the rest of our lives and our lifetimes so i would love to feel a certain trust um and and confidence in the government um here in wales as well but uh, yeah it's still you know i'm very i'm still excited about the future i'm i'm not you know <laughs> um too down about it um and i think yeah uh, things are moving in the right direction i'm hoping well I'd agree with all the points that you made there in, in that final sort of uh, contribution. So, Tuluna Diochvariam, thank you so much for joining me today. Yeah. Yeah.